Welcome back. Welcome to another province in Isan. This one is a banger. I love this place. Welcome to Chayapum. I've just finished a full day exploring this province. Actually two, sorry, two full days. I've loved every second of it. It's mountainous, it's got fresh air, it's got incredible waterfalls, delicious food, and it's just, it's jaw-droppingly beautiful. And I've just finished my exploration, and I'm here at this amazing little temple place at sunset, as you can see behind me. This province is special, it's my favorite in Isan. I think I can say that so far. Yeah, this is my favorite province in Isan. You'll see why in this video. Plus, if you stay to the end, I've got a big surprise for you, like a reveal. Um, that sounds a bit dramatic. Basically, I've got some cool news about my future travels in Isan because something really cool is going to happen. And I can finally tell you because it's confirmed now. So stay tuned to the end and you'll find out what that is. Okay, let's go out and explore Chayapum. Okay, so just walking towards the waterfall here in the National Park. I'm just keeping an eye out because obviously there are snakes in Thailand, but today, unfortunately, I got reminded of, reminded of that fact in an unfortunate way. So, so sorry to report, but you know, I see dead snakes on the road all the time. Cars hit them and they get hit and they die. Um, but today, you know, there was a big one. So I was driving here, I wasn't filming, but I have some footage to show you. You know, I'm driving along up towards the National Park and there's a truck in front of me and it hits a speed bump and I'm about five car lengths behind and then the speed bump starts moving and I look and I see that it's a giant snake that's been hit and it's, you know, in pain and I don't have time to fully stop so I hit it um, and the two cars behind and the truck just finished it off unfortunately. I pulled over because I was a little bit shaken up. Luckily I didn't crash because this thing was thick, you know? And I pulled it to the side of the road because it was so big and it was in, it was an injury. It was basically not moving. I thought it was probably dead, but maybe it was knocked out. And I thought if I just drag it to the side of the road, it might be able to heal up and slither away into the nearby field, but it was already dead. And it was a huge, huge snake several meters long. I think it's a boa constrictor, maybe an anaconda or something, some kind of python anyway. So that was just another reminder that, you know, there are lots and lots of snakes in Thailand and specifically in this area, big ones. So as you can probably hear in the background, there is a beautiful waterfall. I'm almost there, just coming through the last part of the trail. And um, yeah, just wanted to just share that unfortunate story with you because it's wild out here in Isan and you've got to keep an eye on where you're walking. <laughs> Wow, this place is spectacular. Well worth the 200 bar entrance for a foreigner. Cheaper if you tie, but let's not get into that today because this is spectacular. It's not gushing down as you know I've seen in some photographs, but you know, it's not rainy season, but that's probably a good thing because it's not flowing crashing brown. 
there's almost an emerald blue to it. And there's just the most gorgeous color, the water rolling over the rocks on the top of the surface there and then crashing into the plunge pool, which is full of fish and beautiful birds flying around, butterflies. This is in the middle of the national park here. Absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And what's really nice is it's a Saturday today, so all of the Thai people are here having picnics with their families, walking around, and in the distance, upstream, they're just kids swimming, playing, just having fun in the babbling brook, and just enjoying life on a Saturday afternoon with a beautiful blue sky in the middle of a national park, here in a very rare mountain range in Isan. So Chayaprum province, this is the first stop, and you're looking beautiful already. <laughs> What do you reckon? <laughs> we have to get in, don't we? Let's take our socks and shoes off and let's go for a little dip. I just don't know if it's going to be slippy. Oh, it's cold. Look. Well, you can't see the cold. <laughs> Look at the cold. Yeah, this is like a proper mountain stream. They have safety ranges here too. That will take selfies of your girlfriend for you. In fact, everybody's got a personalized Instagram photographer, except for me. Nobody could take a picture of me. I'm probably gonna stay here a couple of hours, if I'm honest. I brought sun cream. They have a shop there that sells water, snacks, and food. This is my vibe. I feel like I haven't been in touch with nature. Even though Isan is a massive expanse, it's mainly farmland, and of course there's animals. But I've missed, I've missed the connection, you know, and the calm that it brings. And I think a good couple of hours here is going to do me right. You know, some people go get a Thai massage, go to the spa, watch movies. For me, relaxing is just finding a nice little stone on the side of the river, using my backpack as a pillow, playing some music and just having a little nap in the sun. And then if I get hot, I'll jump in. I don't care if I have wet jeans for the rest of the day. Look at it. December in Thailand is absolutely unbelievable, especially in the north. But thankfully here in Isan, it's just the same. Blue skies, cooler weather, fantastic. Just all around incredible weather here. So I've said it once, I'll say it again. This is my vibe. <laughs> Wishing time could 
incredible. Best waterfall in Isan, best waterfall I've been to in a bloody, bloody long time, I've got to tell you. And the 200 baht foreign price, it's worth it. I mean, you can't put a price on being that close and immersed in nature, in my opinion. I love that place, that was fantastic. And that's exactly what I needed. It's amazing what a couple of hours just lying on a rock by the waterfall can do to your mind and soul. Anyway, <laughs> a couple more places I want to take you to. I did actually come to this area yesterday on my way from Konken. But as you'll see, there's not any, you know, accommodation in this national park, in this area, which is very strange because it's so beautiful. So I had to stay half an hour away in the town of Chayapum itself. I found a nice hotel and it's only half an hour to get to the waterfall and then, and then another half an hour to get to the fantastic place we're going next. You're going to love it. But it might take us a bit longer than normal. Dreamy, are you alright? She's going to get us there, don't you worry. <laughs> okay, we're here. <laughs> At this very special place. Oh, it's rattly. Dreamy's making a racket. I couldn't sneak home after a night out at the pub in this. <laughs> Wake up half the neighbourhood. This, we'll go take a closer look, is the Stonehenge of Thailand. <laughs> Believe it or not. Let me uh, get my stuff together and we'll, we'll go check it out. So yeah, I can certainly see the resemblance to Stonehenge. It's quite loose, however. I mean, they're stone and they're upright and they're very impressive. I mean, they're very big. And if I come to this angle, you'll see actually how thin they are. Look, you see? Well, this one in particular, almost as if you could push it over. And come and have a look. I'll show you the texture of it because I love to touch things to really understand them and as you can see I'm not going to do it too long but I could pick away at this with my fingernail so it's quite soft and easily erodible easily I could scratch away in fact when I came around here I saw um, hornets uh, or old hornet nests or some sort of bug there it is uh, yeah so something has created those holes I mean even an insect has created that so um, unfortunately there isn't any information on how they were formed or how old they are they're just here and I probably could google it but again I like the mystery of these things and what caused them and what are they so there's a little bit of a mystery which is similar to Stonehenge I went to Stonehenge obviously it's in my home country and the, the story is incredible, but it is just some rocks, but you know, the one thing I will say about Thailand is I wish they would take a little bit ownership in these things because I've been to so many of Thailand's. I've been to the Mount Fiji of Thailand recently. I've been to the Switzerland of Thailand numerous times. There's about five Switzerland's of Thailand. <laughs> and now we're here at the Stonehenge of Thailand. I mean, if you've got these wonderful things, just take ownership and just call them something original. You know, you don't have to borrow something old. Create your own lazy marketing people in Thailand. <laughs> but maybe it works. And the pigeons seem to have nested here. And it's free to come. Uh, but there is a incredible viewpoint overlooking this incredible valley, which we're going to go to in a moment. I think we have to pay to get into that. But this entire mountain range if you look on Google Maps or Google Earth and this is what drew me to this area of the province because the rest of the province is quite flat and I, I'm so desperate for mountains and I saw this almost horseshoe shape arising out of the flatlands of Isan and I knew I had to come here and I'm glad I did and like I said yesterday I just drove to this area couldn't find anywhere to stay which was sad and then went down and through the valley back into the town and the flatlands 
But if this area, if I was going to develop an area for tourism and, you know, put Airbnbs and glamping and camping sites and cool Airbnbs, it's like, you know, like in Chiang Mai or Chiang Rai, places like that, this is, this is like the next place in Thailand because it's got everything you need. It's got incredible views, beautiful nature, incredible weather and things to see and do. And that waterfall was, whew. So yeah, this is the Stonehenge of Thailand. <laughs> Let's go up to the viewpoint. <laughs> what do you reckon guys? It's a bit smoky, a bit misty actually. The weather was a bit better yesterday, which is a bummer. But uh, shall we attempt this wooden bridge thingy? It looks fine to me. Let's go get a proper view. Seems fine to me. <laughs> oh dearie me. And ta-da! Yeah, you can just see that thick layer of mist slash maybe smoke. Yesterday, I have to tell you, when I came up here, I was a little bit upset because I'd driven for four or five hours from Kong Ken and then there was no accommodation up here. Now you can see Thai people are setting up camps. They, you know, they've got tents and they have families and they have supplies, food and drink and everything. And they'll be, have a fantastic evening up here and it'll be amazing. But me and Dreamy, we don't have camping equipment. But you know, in places like Chiang Rai and Phu Chi Pha, Mei Hong Song, basically all around the north, Every single one of these places has so many options for accommodation. I at least thought there'd be a one overpriced glamping spot, but there's nothing. There isn't this, this whole thing that just rises out of the ground in this U shape, this horseshoe shape has, has nothing uh, to stay. I mean, I drove around all day yesterday looking for something, even 10, 15 kilometers in any direction. I use Google Maps and Nothing was coming up. I'm kind of getting in the way of all these people, look. <laughs> They're like, when's that foreigner going to get out of the way so we can take photographs? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, yesterday there was quite a few clouds in the sky and it just, just made the whole scenario so much more beautiful. And it had much better visibility, believe it or not, than this. And, uh, one of the golden rules when you're a travel vlogger like me is if the weather's good, you go film. Because if you think, oh, I'll rest today and film tomorrow, it'll always rain or something bad will happen with the weather. And you're like, why didn't I film yesterday? But by no means is it a crappy day, <laughs> obviously, look at this. So yeah, this is pretty typical. You can rent the tents and things from the national park at the entrance. So you don't ne necessarily need all the gear and I could just camp up tonight. But my underwear is wet from the cold waterfall <laughs> and I don't have any food and uh, I'm all right. It's the football tonight, Saturday night, hi. It's Saturday night, so I fancy watching the football. I can do that back in my hotel room like a boring old man. Look at this, is there a kid in here? There's a kid in this hammock. <laughs> oh, hi. I'll go back to Chayapum. I'll take you to my favorite little food place in the town. It was incredible last night. Really cheap, really delicious. And I'll tell you about my little surprise that's coming up in the province of Buriram. So yeah, let me get up here. We'll fly the drone, enjoy the scenes. I'll go back to town and I'll spill the beans. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so this is my favorite little spot here in Chayapum town. Now to be fair, I've only been here one night and that was last night and this is the only restaurant that I saw. <laughs> but um, delicious nonetheless. It's just Khao Mun Gai, but they also have pork. They also have two types, two types of pork actually. They're like crispy pork belly, which is the one I've gone for. And then they have like the, I don't know how to, how to call it, you know, like the, the red pork, like it's been charred or something. The Roman cook would know, but I don't know what it's called. Anyway, quite simple, 40 baht. And uh, once you add on the delicious homemade ginger sauce and then sprinkle on some, you know, pickled chilies, some chili flakes and some, what is it, roasted nuts? Yeah. And in the next video, we're going to go to Buri Ram, Buri Ram province. And the special thing that's going to be happening is I'm going to be not staying, but visiting. I'm going to go visit the Naked Guru. The Naked Guru is a fellow YouTuber, someone that I've been following for six months, maybe more. And I've fallen in love with his channel and his story and his family and his life in Buriram. And so if you don't know who he is, get ready to learn in the next video. I'll take you around his farm, introduce you to him, and his, hopefully his beautiful family will be there too. So stay tuned for Paddy Doyle in Buriram with the Naked Guru. I'm not gonna go directly to his place. I'm gonna stay in Buriram town for a day or two first because it's a long drive. So the first video you'll see might be just, be, might be just a Buriram video. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna combine the two because he lives a bit further out in the middle of nowhere. But anyway, coming soon, Paddy Doyle and the Naked Guru. I'm excited, I'm really excited. Someone who's got a like-minded outset, an interesting fellow, a very wise man. And I just wanna talk to him and share ideas with him because he seems like my kind of guy. Anyway, that was Chaya Pum. See you in Buri Ram. I feel very feminine wearing this. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> so, come on then, show me what we're doing then. What's the plan? <laughs>